This video will demonstrate how to perform basic annotation draw within LiveCAD. First up is the rectangular workspace. Click the icon in the toolbar to initiate the draw operation. Then press and hold your left mouse button, extend your cursor, and then release the left mouse button. This dialog allows you to define a custom name as well as a custom scale for the workspace. The scale you choose here is independent from that of the drawing. Any annotations you draw within the workspace will follow the workspace's scale rather than that of the drawing. Additionally, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see the option to calibrate your work scale. Select that option, click Save, and then define two points with a known distance. So I'm going to say this is 23 feet, and I'll click Set Scale. On selection of your workspace, you will be able to resize it by clicking any of the resize grips located around your workspace. Additionally, if rotation is required after draw, click the rotation grip and then rotate as desired. Looking at the annotation properties side panel, you will see controls to modify its current style as well as individual style properties of the workspace. Additionally, if you have multiple layers and need to reassign the workspaces layer, click the drop down and then select a new layer. If you need to rename your workspace, you may do so here on this side panel, as well as choose a new scale. If you fail to ca calibrate your workspace and you need to after it's drawn, you may do so here. To delete the annotation, simply select it and press the delete key on your keyboard or right click and choose the delete option. Next up is a polygon workspace. To draw the polygon workspace, simply click each point to display the segment. And then once you've defined the area for your workspace, in the run. Again, you can define the name and scale as desired. To resize your workspace, simply select it and then click one of the resize grips which correspond to your initial clicks at the time of its creation, and then drag them to a new location. The side panel properties for a polygon workspace are the same as those for a rectangle in that you can define the styles, layer, and update any name or scale values previously applied. Next up is the area annotation. The draw operation for this is identical to that of a polygon workspace. Simply click the points to define your area and then in the run. On selection, you'll be able to resize the annotation, which will then dynamically update its perimeter and area values. The annotation property side panel, again, allows you to modify its style individual style properties, layer, and review the area and perimeter values returned. Additionally, the description field allows you to enter a description, which is then used if you so choose to generate a measurement summary for this job. To delete the annotation, select it and then press delete on your keyboard. Next up is the manual counted points. Once you're in the draw mode, simply click each location that you wish to place a point. For each click, a point is placed and the count is increased plus one. On end a run, the annotations are saved to the drawing canvas. And then on selection, the annotation property side panel is displayed where you can modify its style properties, its layer, and review the total count. You may also enter an optional description, which is used in the measurement summary if you generate one later on. A field unique to the manual count of points is point text. So I'm going to enter in a value of A, 
which places point text for that selected annotation. If I have multiple points selected and I enter a point text of B, all the points within my selection set are updated to obtain the same point text. Additionally, if you need to move a point, simply click it and drag it to a new location. If you need to change the count state of a point, select it and then deselect the include in count checkbox. What this results in is the point remaining in your drawing, but it is no longer counted in your totals. We will see that its total count is updated from 6 of 6 to 5 of 6. If we need to recount that point, select it, and then click Include in Count to update your total count. Next up is length annotation. To draw a length annotation, simply click the start point and then click each point within your run. Once you have completed the run, press the Enter key on your keyboard or right click and commit. If you need to resize your run, select a point, drag it to its new location, and your totals will be updated to reflect the new measured length. If you select a point within the run, you will be able to change its count state similar to what we did with the manual counted point via the annotation property side panel. If you select a segment, include in length option will be present and moving the check mark uncounts the segment, which is then reflected in your totals. Total length is reduced and total segments are reduced accordingly. On the annotation property side panel, you will be able to modify the style properties, its current assigned layer, and view its return to measurements. And again, the description field is present for this annotation, which allows you to define a value, which will then be present in your measurement summary upon its creation. To delete the annotation, simply select it and then shift delete will remove the entire annotation. Auto count will be covered in its own separate set of videos, so we will move on to the polygon annotation. Its draw operation is identical to that of an area as well as a polygon workspace. Define the area of the polygon and on end of run, the annotation is saved to the canvas and its perimeter and area are returned. Modification of the polygon will adjust its perimeter and area accordingly. As with all annotations, you may modify its style and layer through the right-hand side panel. Next up is the rectangle annotation, which also returns an area and perimeter. Its draw operation is identical to that of a rectangular workspace. Click your first point, hold the left mouse button, and then on release, the annotation is saved to the drawing. On selection, you can resize it, which will dynamically update its area and perimeter. And the same style and layer controls are present. Next up is the circle annotation. So this is a click and drag and then release operation. And once the annotation is saved, it returns an area and a perimeter. Next up is the note. Click the location at which you want the note to reside and the note is placed on your drawing. You can use the resize grips to resize the note and you can optionally rotate the note as desired. To enter in your own text, click into the note add some new text, and then click on an empty spot of your drawing to save that text. You may also update the note text through the side panel. To delete the note, right click and delete, or select it, and then hit the delete key on your keyboard. Next up, 
is the arrow annotation. Click the start point and then extend your cursor to the desired location and perform a second click. The draw operation is ended immediately following the second click. On selection, you may modify the arrow, arrow's orientation. And if you double click the arrow, it will select it. It's like the entire annotation. Or you can click and drag your mouse to box it in and move the arrow to a new location while retaining its orientation. Next up is the line highlighter. Its draw operation is similar to that of a length annotation in that each click point places a point and the new segment is anchored to that point which then follows your cursor. If you need to adjust your line highlighter, simply click at one of your click points. You'll see a box placed around that point, and then you can drag it to its new location as needed. The next highlighter tool is the freehand highlighter. This allows you to draw a freeform highlighter around various elements within your drawing. Once you are done, hit enter or right click and commit. And on selection, you will see the familiar style layer controls available. Lastly is the dimension annotation. Click your first point, extend your cursor, and then click your second point. To resize your dimension annotation, click either the left or the right end, and then drag it to its new location, which will update its measurement accordingly. To change its style, simply se select one of the presets available, or you may modify the line style independently while retaining your existing style. 